given what's happening along the india tibet border at this time uh, what do you believe is realistically possible on the political issue of tibet a lot of the commentary in china would have us believe that this is an issue that's now long in the past that a lot of the young tibetans see the advantage that uh, becoming a part of mainstream china provides to them in terms of prosperity in terms of jobs in terms of infrastructure in terms of modern amenities which they didn't have when tibet was an autonomous area so given the current conflict and the international scenario what do you believe dr sange is realistically possible on the issue of tibet you know colonial power always used some you know economic justification to occupy your country so india was under british colon you know british rule for 250 years and all that time they would say you are better off under us similarly they are using this economic justification for, you know in tibet as well but it's baseless if chinese government is so confident that tibetans in tibet will support them then let's have a referendum of tibetans in tibet let them vote and choose a tibetan leader and chinese leader and i can say with absolute certainty hands down a tibetan leader would win if i was the candidate and if the xin jinping or any other chinese leader is the candidate i'm pretty sure i would win not because i'm lopsang sange but because i'm a tibetan tibetan would like to see the leader to be a tibetan so what chinese government says is not true and for fact 154 tibetans have committed self immolation they have burned themselves which is to say they are suffering their repression is so painful so unbearable the tibetans are saying i would put kerosene or gasoline over my body and burn myself to protest against the repression of tibetan people and cultural assimilation of tibet so this is what's going on in tibet as we speak so a us lawmaker has moved a bill in the congress asking for the american president to recognize tibet as an independent nation now this has been generating international headlines as the leader of the tibetan government in exile what are you making of what's happening in the united states yes i i know uh, there is a resolution supporting the independence of tibet and we welcome any kind of support from anybody you know because we we do need support from everybody but this is more of a symbolic gesture and so which is a, which which it is and we have also made a representation regarding the definition of tibet and he says only tibet autonomous region now his office is correcting it to say that it, it they meant tibet right but there is more substantive bill called tibetan policy and support act of 2019 which was passed in the us house with 392 members supporting it you know out of 426 votes Uh, 26 members which is you know 95% of the congress members have supported the bill this will you know come to the senate and if senate votes um then it will go to president trump to sign it so that's a more substantive bill what it shows is that support for tibet no matter what chinese government says in the us is very strong even in the european countries are strong in australia and many countries are realizing that we need to learn from tibet and unless you know the issue of tibet you will never fully understand china and the chinese government's maneuvering and manipulation so this is a lesson even for india and the you know people of india to know learn what's going on in tibet then you will understand what china or chinese government is capable of so there is a growing realization all around the world that yes we should have listened to tibet 60 years ago we could have been more careful now we are listening we are paying attention and the uh, support for tibet is coming out in a bigger form including the resolution in the us congress let me now ask you to answer the question that you just posed what according to you dr sange is the lesson that the indian government and the indian people need to learn from the manner in which china maneuvered itself into tibet what lessons do you think this holds for a country like india Now there's a famous document called Simla Convention which was signed in 1914. You know the Simla Convention on Indo-Pakistan is very well known. Simla Convention on Tibet in India is not known. Since 1914 we have you know negotiated and come to terms regarding border of India and China particularly in Arunachal and border of China and Tibet, right? And since that time we have renewed this trade uh, agreement. Uh, from 1914 to 2014 to 34 to 44 to 54 and it was all renewed between Lhasa and Delhi 
But in 54, it was renewed between Beijing and India, and it came out in the form of Panchil. If you look at that agreement, it's only in the preamble the Panchil is put, but in the body, still the trade route from Sikkim to Gangze to Shigatse to Lhasa, right? Now, since Panchil, India had to withdraw, withdraw its representatives from Lhasa back, and the presence of small military personnel or police security personnel back. And since Panchil was signed, Disappointment after disappointment has happened to India, including the 1962 war, right? And its influence in neighboring countries like Nepal and Sri Lanka and Bangladesh, and you see everywhere. So India needs to learn a lesson. By trusting the Chinese government fully, unconditionally, is not the way to go. You must have relationship with China. That's a fact. You must have business relationship with China. That's a fact. But you should make more profit from doing business. Diplomatically, you should gain more over 3,488 kilometers long border. So that's what India needs to learn.